Hello, my hungry friends. Welcome back to Polisha Kitchen. If you have children or you're a child at heart, today's video is for you. We're making Polish pancakes. Naleśniki. We are making a delicious Polish treat called Naleśniki. Those are uh, thin pancakes uh, in French called crepes and we fill them with deliciously sweet uh, farmer's cheese mixture that we'll make today also. Uh, I've decided to make my batter in the blender today, but it's more of a personal preference. You can uh, hand blend it with a whisk or you can even uh, use a hand blender. Or you can use your stand-up mixer also. I thought this is going to be the easiest and the fastest, so that's what I'm trying today. Um, our ingredients, we have two eggs with a pinch of salt. Uh, for our liquids, I have a, then this is a mixture that you can kind of do whatever you have with your, with the ingredients you have at home. And it'll be a cup of water and half a cup of buttermilk and half a cup of milk. If you don't have buttermilk, you can uh, add a cup of milk and a couple tablespoons of yogurt or half a cup of yogurt. Just kind of do what you can. But uh, bottom line, we need two cups of liquid. And then I have a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, and we're gonna add two teaspoons of sugar, just regular sugar. Uh, if you're making a savory version of this, which is um, for another video, uh, you wouldn't add sugar. And then we have melted butter, about a tablespoon. You can also do um, uh, coconut oil if you prefer or you can do vegetable oil. I like butter so I melted some butter and it's just hanging out here. So I'm gonna pour everything into my blender and we'll turn this thing on and just let it rip. Buttermilk tends to add a little bit more moisture to the finished product and you can definitely taste it um, in, the, in the end. So I like adding a little bit of buttermilk two of these. I'm talking, can't think straight. Uh, so if you can, try that with buttermilk sometimes. If you're not a big fan, uh, try maybe plain yogurt or Greek yogurt. Either way, they'll be delicious. Especially if you add the sweet, uh, sweet uh, filling into it. So here's our butter. Watch your ears. We're going to blend this until smooth. That took about 10 seconds. Don't have to fuss too much about it. I have some flour sticking to my wall, so I'm just going to scrape it off, scrape it off, and to turn it on for another few seconds, just so, so that there's no dry lumps in it. But other than that, you're looking good. This is a lot faster than hand blending, that's for sure. All right, watch your ears. That is all. I'm gonna leave it to rest here for a couple minutes while we do our filling. For our filling, I have uh, farmer's cheese. Um, this is the kind of cheese that is made from uh, heating up soured milk. You can make it on your own or you, if you're lucky enough to, for it to be able to, Lucy came to visit, that's what the click clacking you may hear on the floor. Um, if you're lucky enough that you have some in your local store, um, it will be nice for you. If not, I encourage you to make some. I will post a link to a recipe, to my recipe for farmer's cheese below in the video description. Or if you don't want to make any and you can't buy any, you can also substitute with cream cheese. And we're going to use about 8 ounces. And I also have a, uh, some sugar, just regular sugar, and uh, I believe it's a teaspoon of um, cinnamon. And I have uh, half a cup to three quarter of a cup of either sour cream or yogurt or Greek yogurt, 
whatever you have, whatever you prefer, and kind of depends on how dry your, your cheese is. So this will kind of have to adjust if we have to, um, if this comes to dry. I follow the recipe that I wrote on, uh, on my page, also link in the description, but you can adjust to however dry or wet your, your cream cheese or your farmer's cheese is. Mine came out pretty good. It's, uh, it's still wet, <coughs> but it's not going to run out of our, um, our finished naleśniki. My grandma used to add, also would add a egg yolk, raw, raw egg yolk to it. I'm not a huge fan all the time. Sometimes I will do it, but I didn't feel like today, so I'm not adding any but it kind of adds the creaminess to the filling also. This looks good. Can you see it? Okay. I got the lumps out. I got the sugar in. And this is ready for our pancakes. So I'm just gonna let this rest here and we'll get our pancakes made. I have, so this is, um, I guess the amount of your pancakes will depend on the size of your pan. Mine is, uh, I guess, not too big. Uh, you can try different sizes if you want and see what works. Um, but I've had this heating, so we're ready to go. And you're gonna put a little bit of fat on the bottom. Traditionally, it would be smalets, which is pork fat uh, that's been rendered. It adds a nice taste to, to, the, to, the, to the pancake also. You can do butter or you can do vegetable oil. I'm doing, I had some duck fat left over from cooking duck the other day, so I'm using duck fat. And I put about half a tablespoon on the bottom. And this is melted, so I'm just kind of brushing it around with my uh, with my brush. But I don't want a super thick uh, coat of oil on the bottom. I just want the pan not to stick, uh, the pancake not to stick. And now this is going to be the trick. The first pancakes you always eat because most likely won't come out. That's the rules. And also on the first one, you will kind of judge how big of a spoon you want. You can start with measuring spoon, uh, try half a cup first, and then if you think they're too thick, then you can go down. I'm gonna try half a cup and see how that goes. But batter is pretty watery. This actually is not a full half a cup, but we'll try it. And wait for the pan to be hot. Pour it on, I, I can see already it's too much batter. You want this as thin as possible and spread it around and just wait for the, for the pan to do the job. But we're, we're, the pan needs to be pretty hot. Uh, once it's hot, turn it down a little bit. But what you want to see is one side that's to the pan will brown a little bit, but mainly it'll just dry the dough. Uh, once it dries on the top layer that we see here, and it starts kind of bubbling, then we know it's time to flip. So get your flipper ready. And once the edges dry a little bit and you can see they are kind of sticking together, we'll know it's time to flip. So the top of mine dried already. Can you see it? But I want the edges to to crisp up a little bit more so when I flip the whole thing doesn't fall apart right away this stove is kind of slow so if you're cooking with gas this may be a little bit faster so we'll, we'll wait for this to dry a little bit more on the edges and I like doing the first one because I get to eat it right away I don't have to wait for filling so we're filling ours with our, cre our cream cheese or farmer's cheese filling today but you can also do jelly just store-bought jelly if you have your if you make your own that's even better um, or you can just 
eat them like this. Okay, so mine looks like it's drying. And it's slipping, uh, sli slippery, it's slippery. It's slipping around the pan a little bit. So I'm gonna get my uh, spatula underneath the, bl the blanket, the pancake. <laughs> and I'm just gonna go flip. And that's not too bad for our first one. Normally the first one falls apart for me and it's holy on the edges. So this is this wasn't so bad. This is what it should have looked like. This is what we want it to look like when we flip it. It's got little brown spots and it's a little bit more drier on the on the outside. I flipped it back again just to get a little bit more color on it. They cook pretty fast because they're super thin. All right. I'm going to take this one out, I'm going to start a new one, and then we'll taste this one. So you don't have to add a whole lot of fat to it, just use your brush again, dab it in the butter or whatever uh, oil you're using, just enough to, uh, to be a little bit uh, on the bottom. So I'm going to do a little bit less than a full half a cup. and. You gotta be quick with turning the batter around. And we want it to be thin, but cover the whole area. This one looked like this is perfect. So we'll let this cook and we'll taste our first pancake. This is how you taste it. You want them? Mm -hmm. mm, it's perfect. It's moist on the inside. You can also, when we're kids, we would take this and just sprinkle some sugar on it. And just eat like that. Mmm. This is what my childhood tastes like. Delicious. So these uh, thinner guys are gonna cook a lot faster. Sorry, my mouth's watering. But see how the edges are browning? Let's give it a nice flip and work through your batter and once we cook all of this we'll fill them. So I'll see you back in a couple minutes. We're done with our naleśniki. This recipe yielded about 12 pancakes and I guess that will depend on the size of your pan but you can expect about 10 to 12. Uh, and so we're gonna fill our pancakes now and they're gonna go back onto the pan and we're gonna uh, put a nice sear to them. So as you can see, if you're like me, uh, your pancakes will always be darker on one side than the other. So fill the side that, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna take a little bit bigger one. This one seems small. Uh, fill the size that's the side that's a little bit darker. So that's, we're gonna put that one, that side up and you're gonna take a little bit of filling and you can take as much or as little as you want, but don't overstuff them because you don't want the filling oozing out while you're cooking. We put it on the whole thing, and as I said before, you can do this with jelly also. A nice layer and fold it in half. And the battle about these and the dispute goes on which way do you fold? Do you make triangles or do you roll them? I like to make mine into triangles because they'll fit into my pan uh, perfectly because that's the size pan I use. That's how much space they'll take. So my pan is hot. I'm just gonna add a little bit of grease to it again. And I'm using the duck fat still. And they will just go around. In a circle. And I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit just so they don't burn. And once we do a little brown cover on that, they'll be done. We can eat. In Poland we eat those normally for dinner, surprisingly. Uh, 
breakfast sometimes if there were some leftovers for sure but they were mainly made for dinner in my home it could be different for I guess for others but to me they are kind of a, a dinner food we want uh, we want a nice layer of crust if you will on the on them so watch them so they don't burn right away and this will heat them up and we'll make a smaller spatula this will heat them up and it will get them ready for eating that's about about as dark as I want to go careful don't burn yourself doesn't take long especially if your pan was really hot like mine as you can see they're nice and toasty brown and they'll be ready in another minute or so you can decorate with powdered sugar on top if you want to or you can just eat them like this what's your question? I see you're dying to ask one Are there, what would you do for a filling on a savory one? You said don't add sugar in the batter. What would a savory filling be, for example? You could do a couple different things that come to uh, my mind right away. So one would be sauerkraut and mushrooms. So the filling is the same as it goes into pierogi. And you can do mushrooms only. Or you can do meat, just like those, um, just like the filling in my meat pierogi. Which is your favorite? The kapusta with mushrooms. Yeah, mine too. We should make those soon. We should. Okay, I'm taking these off. They look crispy on the bottom. Put them back into a nice circle. And we are ready. Turn this off. We are ready to taste. What do you think? Dum -dum. Don't they look delicious? I think I maybe just switch one to here. Whoa! Watch out for the filling. It's super hot. So the filling is nice and tangy. That's what we, we get from the farmer's cheese. Sorry. Most watering right away. <laughs> um, and if you do add a little bit of uh, buttermilk to your batter, it'll kind of bring another layer of flavor too. Care careful while tasting. Mm. They're not super sweet. It's really good balance between sweet and savory. That tanginess from the cheese comes through right away. Enjoy it with your family. I hope you make it soon. Like my video. Click below. Subscribe so you don't miss anything. Come see us again. Check out the merch store. Are you a kapusta eater? I am. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Smachnego.